So welcome to the very first ever podcast. Is it? This is the first wood woodyard podcast. First one, number one. Oh, my goal is to do a bunch of these. Really, like one a week would be kind of cool. So uh, there's a lot of things that come up as we're doing videos that we think you know we should talk more about that, or we get a lot of questions, and so that's what this is intended to do. And my old best friend is Tony is here. I figured he's the perfect person to have here because. He's done this kind of stuff before. Ah. He's been on QVC. He's been, been in sales for a long time. He's very good at research, very good at finding out all the information that needs to be uh, talked about. I'm not a detail person when it comes to some of this stuff, but he Yeah, but is. you're a mouth person. Yeah, well, I just I pretend I know what I'm talking about. Hey, can you get that, the <laughs> cosmetic lady to come back? You said no, you'd make me no. look better. No, that's not possible. Oh, not God. For you. <laughs> so, so what we're going to do on these podcasts is we're going to have a topic, and we're going to talk about that that topic for however long it takes until we run out of air half hour hour we don't know oh, this is the first one so in your case i don't know yeah we could go a long time and we thought you know since this is our very first one there's nothing better to talk about than chainsaws. chainsaws. So we're going to talk about chainsaws, and this isn't going to be a real in-depth discussion as far as particular saws. What we want to do is kind of give an overview mm -hmm. and talk about where we started, what we progression, what we've progressed to, and for those of you that are getting into this, the progression maybe that you're at, or some tips on what what we did and maybe would help you out. Uh, recommendations for starting out like a homeowner all the way up to someone that runs saws every day. So that's kind of what we're going to do on this podcast. It's going to be all about chainsaws. So here we go. Specific brands, though? Yes, we're going to talk about brands. Oh, yes. okay. Yes. The now, best brands? <laughs> There's a little rivalry, obviously. You guys might not know this. Tony's a steel guy. I'm a harsh no, guy. Non-denominational. I, I haven't switched yet. I, but. I'm non-denominational myself. I just, and that's probably what we, where we should start. Yeah. Why we have the saws we have. Now, my first saw was a Poolan wild thing. What was yours? Uh, same. Th it wasn't a wild thing, but it was a pool on. Yeah, and that's where a lot of people. So I got mine for free. It was in a, some type of a thing where I purchased something and got it. So that's why I started with it. You know, and I I, I ran other saws here and there when I was younger that my dad had. He had some John Shreds and then some Husqvarna's, and um, he had a McCulloch, you know, things like that. But never really cut much with it, just a little bit. And then when I bought my pool on, I used that mainly for like just doing brush around the yard and stuff like an average consumer would do and then when I started cutting wood for myself for burning I bought a Husqvarna 455 Rancher and the reason I bought it is because that's what my brother Ken had my brother Eric had my dad had Husqvarna so I just went with what they had and it wasn't by any design other than that's what they had and they said hey that's just probably a good size saw so that's why I started with 55 cc and for a consumer that's a good size saw so what's the well, version for you I lived in a subdivision the majority of my life in the city so mm -hmm. brush some tree trimming mm -hmm. I said Poulan was my first saw but truly 45 years ago my first saw was an electric Milwaukee chainsaw mm -hmm. I started nice. with that yeah I still have it to this day don't use it but it's a nice wall <laughs> hanger yeah. but after that it went with the Poulan right. and I didn't really start getting into firewood until I started in the hunting clubs and we started exchanging uh, firewood or uh, hunting rights for labor mm -hmm. and that's when I bought my first steel chainsaw on 026 right right and I had that for many many years until I started upgrading when I started getting and within the last 10 years I've kind of progressed like you mm -hmm. upgraded from retail or, or homeowner saws mm -hmm. switching to all pro saws right not that there's anything wrong with a homeowner saw right and I get asked all the time by guys like you know, I had a guy just the other day he said he got a, what's the, the steel version of the rancher? Is it a boss? Farm boss? I believe it's a farm boss, yeah. He says he can't get it to start just having problems. I'm like, well, he wanted to know what he should do. I, I, it's a steel. I'm not familiar with it, and it's consumer saw. So he said buy a husky. Uh, no, I said oh. take it back. <laughs> Take it back. It's probably your best option. Um, so that brings us up to the next thing. When you buy a consumer type saw, you're going to buy it probably from a box store or something yep, like that. Yep. That's where you're going to get a good price. You're not going to get service. See, that's Which it. is why you want to probably go with a pro size saw once you start cutting enough. Uh, we probably should back up to you know the consumer saws. But there's going to be a progression.
impression of when you say someday, you know, this is just not, it's not cutting it. But let's just go back there. like you said. Even if you don't get it from a pro shop, a specific branded pro shop, we have farm and ranch stores mm -hmm. here and we have a fleet farm and a farm and fleet. Mm -hmm. And when you go, they might have a dealership for steel saws. Right. And they will carry from, re, or from homeowners all the way right. up to a, a handful of the pro saws. Mm -hmm. And you have a great progression. A lot of times it's budget and what are you cutting? That's the two things. Right, right. If you're only going to cut a little bit around your yard, it doesn't matter what brand you get. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Where you get it. You, it's, I look at it as almost like it's a disposable saw anyway. Like a lot of tools that you get for the home with seldom used tools. Mm -hmm. you, know, you might use it once a year, maybe once every other year. So then, then you go to Harbor Freight. And then it doesn't matter. Okay. It doesn't matter. It, but that, actually, if that's all you're going to use it for, borrow someone, someone else's saw. Um, but my advice is to go to a pro shop to ask the experts, tell them what you're going to do, get their advice. The people that work there work with saws every day. They know what Bingo. people are using it for. So go to a pro shop, whether it's a steel or a Husqvarna dealership. Or Echo. Or That's Echo, yep. Same thing. Yeah, the place I go to, Modern Rentals, they have Echo stuff there. And it's real nice stuff, but it's not professional grade. Um, the reason we went to professional grade and what reason you did, we use them a lot. Yeah. Same as, uh, same as any other product. If you're going to use it a lot, then you get the better stuff. Definitely. That's the way it is. So. Buy it once, cry, it, cry once, like you say. Yeah, but the other thing, too, people don't think of is you if you buy a professional grade of any type of tool, they hold their value pretty That's decent. That's true. Um, because they're made to last longer, mm -hmm. so you're going to be able to get it, and if you want to upgrade, you can trade it in, or you can sell it outright, get some, if not most of your money back, and then go to the next model. And the sure. difference between plastic and metal. Right. On the pro saws. Right. Right. And the thing is, with buying uh, the homeowner type saws, you're going to get it as a kit most of the time. You're going to get pretty much what you need. Whereas if you buy a pro saw, you're going to buy your power head separately from your bar and then your chain yep. separately and then all the accessories. And you'll learn as you go. All I can say is the same as anything else. Do your research. Ask yourself an honest question. What are you going to use it for? Yeah. Because most guys, I know I'm like you, you have big intentions and you think you need the biggest and the best. Not always. Yeah. <laughs> Not always. You know, there, that's one thing too. If you have somebody that can mentor you, regardless of who it is, you, you see a saw, you pick it up, you kind of like it, and it's like, okay, I want to get that saw. But, right. you know, is it the right saw for you? I don't know. Yeah, and the other thing that, that I would suggest is, you know, if you have a need to buy a chainsaw, Obviously, talk to people that have had them, and don't just talk to a homeowner. Talk to someone that has a little bit more experience. You know, watch YouTube videos on how to do stuff. But to be able to talk to someone is more importantly than watching a video because you can't ask questions and get answers all the time. Going well, to a shop, you're going to be able to do that. Also, be open-minded. Don't just because your friend has a steel or a husky or an echo, don't just buy that. You know, go ahead. Yeah, you can have a recommendation, but also take a look out there. there. There's a lot, like you said, YouTube is a good a good resource, mm -hmm. without a doubt. Uh, reference is a good, I wouldn't own a steel saw because they all leak. You know, oh, okay. <laughs> it's one of those. Or I wouldn't own a husky because whatever it is. I don't, can't think of a reason. Oh, I, I can. The out, <laughs> outbound clutch. I hate those. But that's okay. I didn't say that. Yeah, it's, uh, there is, and it's little differences. It's the same old Ford Chevy debate with all products. No doubt about it. Coke Just because Toyota is a toy, I understand that. But <laughs> Dodge is the only way to go, but that's okay. <laughs> we won't go there. So let's talk a little bit about like our progression. We said we started out with the Poulans, and the, my next saw was a Husqvarna 455 Rancher, and it worked great, and I started selling. But why? Wood. Why did you go with the Husky? Because that's what my brother had, and I had a dealer real close by, and I could get it, and the price was the price point that I thought was I would pay. It was, but you were cheap back then. It was just like you are now. 150 bucks. I don't know. Oh time, my god, something like that. So it wasn't that expensive because I didn't know how much wood I was going to cut. I thought, well, this will this will work. And a buddy of mine had 
had a saw that was similar in size and I used his and I thought, yeah, that'll work. And it worked great. But then I started selling more wood and more wood and more wood. And, like, I'm gonna, and my brother Ken, as you know, a lot of you, he says, when are you gonna get rid of that weenie saw and get a real <laughs> saw? Because he's been logging for 30, 40 years and he uses professional grade saws. And the first time I used a professional grade saw was with my brother Eric. And it was uh, 576 that he had bought brand new. And I, he was cutting on the, on the butt of the tree and I was cut limbing. I didn't even get a couple branches cut and he had the whole thing cut up already. Opened and your I eyes, opened huh? Opened my eyes like, wow. And then I ran it and then my eyes were really wide. I was like, holy smokes. It cuts twice as fast. Well, that's twice the problem. Fast. Like I say, get a mentor because you can look at that. Your pocketbook uh, in a lot of cases <laughs> will exceed what you can or, or you can't buy what you really want. You got to start somewhere, right. you know, and knowing your needs. But yeah, if you give somebody, uh, I'll go with steel. If you let them try a 460 two or a 500 as their first saw, no. you spoil them. Well, and they shouldn't because it's more it's than too they much. can handle. It's too That's much. That's the other thing we should talk about, the progression. Start with small saws. Yeah. Because a chainsaw, even a small one, can kill you. Yes. And can damage you tremendously. Big ones, it just happens faster. That's it. And it's no different than if if, if you're in a, a little car that, you know, zero to 60 is a week versus right. getting, getting in a Ferrari in zero to 60 is three seconds. There's a difference. And there's a, yeah. <laughs> there's a big difference. And some of the pro saws, they are race cars. Yes. They're crotch rockets. And you're holding on to that. And uh, until you get some experience, you shouldn't be running a big saw. True. You should not. True. Uh, you got to work your way up. Unless you got someone to hold your hand and teach sure. you all the stuff. And that's another thing. We're not even going to go there. Because Take a class. Yeah. Go, go to Europe and it's certification in many cases. You have to be certified before you could buy a saw or use a saw and over here who wants to go to classes because this is America right it's America, America. We have freedom here <laughs> so uh, we'll be talking about first aid here in a little while too and we'll discuss yeah. that yeah so yeah you want to get what you can handle so again the progression get it start with a smaller saw work your way up um, I, w I would recommend you know trying other people's saws out uh, and the one thing we mentioned a little bit find a saw brand that you like for whatever reason and that there is a dealership close by. Service is probably one of the most important. Right. Because Forget about the brand, the service. Right. Stuff's going to go wrong. And, and, and a lot of people on my channel will make comments and I can tell right away by their comment if they're a newbie or if they're a pro or if they're a pro that's a jerk. You can tell right away. <laughs> well, <laughs> Because oh, don't, you don't know that? Well, no, I don't know everything. One other thing. It's like the difference between steel and husky. Steel you cannot buy online per se, whereas husky you can. Mm -hmm. And there's a difference in that too on how you're going to get that. But to your point, right. service is extremely important. Yeah, and, and you're going to get people that will help you tremendously. And if you go to a, a pro shop and they don't help you, go somewhere else. Because yeah. you're going to have places like that. And unfortunately, in today's world, service is going down fast. There is it's, no service. It's, it's hard to find. It's hard to find a good place that knows what they're doing. And when you find someone, don't be afraid to buy from them, even if you got to pay a little more. Absolutely. I agree with it's you worth 100%. It. It's worth it. It's worth they're going to help you more. $10 more. <laughs> yeah. For sure. That's worth quite a bit more. So, yeah. And like I mentioned about people making comments, when I get a new person, you know, they'll ask a question like, you know, what size bar do you recommend? That's almost always a newbie question yep. because they think the bar size is the saw size, and it isn't. Like, well, can I run a 24-inch bar on my whatever? The little tiny, yeah. Yeah, um, but that's not the question. The real question is, is how many cc's does it have? How much does it weigh? What are you going to be using it for? What kind of trees are you going to be cutting? I mean, let's go to the Europeans so again. Much, yeah. All small bars. Yeah, yeah. But then again, they have smaller trees. Because John they're managed, from, managed forests. Yeah. Right. John from Frickin' Jeep, his contention is you shouldn't have anything more than an 18 inch, an 18 inch bar. That for him, that's the mm -hmm. less teeth to sharpen, yeah. smaller, lighter weight. 
all good, all yep. good talking points, yep. regardless. When I talked to him about it, and you and I talked about it, we switched all to 24 inch. For the most part. Yeah, I mean, you got me converted into 24, and I'm glad you did. Yes, it is heavier. Yes, I have to sharpen more teeth. But for me, it's much more comfortable. I'm not bending over as much. Well, in, in the woods, or forest, when you're moving around through brush, shorter bar is nice. Yeah, absolutely. It is. And with a 18 inch, you double it, you got a 36 inch cut. 36 is a pretty big tree. Yeah. And and you can cut most anything. Kenny, for years, my brother Ken, who did logging, he used a 20 inch bar all the time. 20 inch bars, all we use. Because he said, it cuts you a 40 inch tree. True. And he said, you don't have to cut all the way through to get a tree down. The reason I went to the 24 is because I cut so much into log piles and I'm not bending over. When I got my first 24 inch bar, it was like... Like heaven. My I think you hit a tired. great point right there. That's why you got me to switch. I was 20, a uh, 20 inch bar up until about three years ago, or two years ago when we, we started doing videos and you said, hey, why, why don't you try? It was, for me, it was a, a, yeah, me a too. opening moment. For I was me. Able, to, able to cut more comfortably, safer, mm -hmm. for longer. Yes. That's what it did for me, the way I cut. But then you go to the West Coast guys, you know, and they've got the big, huge bars. But 28. 32 but, but and 36. But they're cutting old growth forest and they're cutting trees that are huge. Yeah. And that's a totally different thing. And they're also called cutting softwood. Well, that's softwood it. Let's cuts not get into wood. that argument. Yeah, here. there's the old hardwood softwood. Yeah. Softwood is easy to cut. It just is. And hardwood no, cuts hard. They're going to say it's not. Yeah. Well, I've cut both. <laughs> We're talking wood, that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, there's just so many considerations, and that's kind of why we're talking about this. We just thought we would kind of start with this. And, and so then, you know, I had my 455 Rancher. I switched. I bought a 576. Then I bought another 576. Then I bought a couple 572s. And then last year I bought a 591, 592. And now I bought that big pig, the, the 3120. And so they've just gotten bigger. And it's not because I really needed them. I just wanted them. Mm -hmm. Although, I got to say, bigger saws cut faster, and if you're doing production, speed is everything. So, so once again, speed. speed is production. But speed also can hurt and maim you. Yeah. So there's that. And a bigger saw, it's, it's, it's bigger what's, to handle. What's the old saying? Nothing good happened fast. <laughs> So, I, I don't know, but yes, uh, going with a higher CC saw definitely makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And you notice it in your production work, you notice it in just the cutting that you do. Right. It's, right. like you say, you called it a crotch rocket. And yeah. for, for that 500 for me, or the 572 for you, oh, both five, of them. 590, 592. Well, the 592 is the 90 CC. Yeah, you know? it's even faster. You know? yeah. But yeah, that, that progression up, I, I went to the highest steel or not the highest but one of the higher 391 mm -hmm. And then I switched to the 261, the first, the lowest uh, commercial or contractor, or, mm -hmm. yeah, pro saw, I, should, mm -hmm. I was trying to say. I switched to that. And I will tell you, if I, had, if I was stranded on an island somewhere, mm -hmm. the one saw I'd probably own would be that 261. It's a 50cc saw. It's a commercial or a, a, a pro saw. But I will tell you, it does everything. I don't use it much at all now since I got the bigger saws mm -hmm. but that is one for me in the steel lineup that's the one that I think is the sweet spot for a new person getting in and even a, a semi pro or somebody who's not doing a lot of firewood right a 50 cc saw is a good middle of the road saw for right you. you can it's small enough you can limb with it it's big enough you can cut trees with it right and right that, and that'll do 90 percent of what everybody wants mm -hmm. but you make that next step to a 70 cc saw actually you can go to 60 60 yeah but 70 to me is the sweet spot. That's the saw I'd want. I'd I, at 70 I, you turned me on to <laughs> 70 cc saws, and I'll never go back. Yeah, they're, it's just really nice. They're they're not too big, mm -hmm. but they're not too small. Um, you can cut faster. You can cut longer with them, but then when you go up to the next size, the 80 cc or the 90 cc saws, the weight gets more. It's just they're louder. They're heavier. Just everything about them. It's not. It's fun for a while. Before I forget, let's also discuss the mods that are going on. You oh, yeah. I, yeah. That'll be one, but I didn't want you to forget about that because yeah, that's an important one for tons, a lot of people. Yeah, Yeah. there's tons tons to know. Like I say, go to a shop, right. learn, do your research. Now, one of the things that I've, this is, everybody knows this is no secret, 
The still numbering system is very confusing. It's, it sucks. It doesn't make any logical sense. The Husqvarna system makes a little sense. Okay, I'll give you that point. <laughs> well, I will give you that point. So in the Husqvarna, your first number on the saw. So we're gonna we're gonna go old school. We're gonna go the three. Well, two series actually was. Well, a long time ago. Then they went to three series. Now they're in the five series. So the first number is your series of your saw. The second number, second two numbers, are your CCs, more or less. So my 572 is a five series, 72 CCs or whatever it is. It might be 71.5. I don't know what the numbers are. It's a 70 CC saw. And then the next one up from that that I bought last year is the 592, and that's a 92 CC, but still in the five series. Now on Husqvarna, um, that kind of makes sense that that's how they do it. But in the world of steel, but does that make the saw any better? Is no. their numbering no. system okay? No, no. steel is an awesome saws. My favorite steel What'd saw. What'd you say? They're awesome. Oh, my great. favorite steel saw is probably the 462. You used to say 500. No, I like the 500, but I've ran a couple of 462s, and if I had to pick one steel chainsaw to have, it would be the 462. It's a really nice saw. It it's is. It's just an awesome saw. It does everything you need it to do. It's a 72cc. And you know what? I can have the 462 and the 500, mm -hmm. and I still gravitate towards the 500. Uh, it's, it's a little just faster. Just a little. Well, it's, it's another 8. Is yeah. that 8? So it's not quite 8. It's 72.2 to 79.2. So seven more cc's. Mm -hmm. And it's noticeable. Yeah. But yeah. then the fuel injection makes the difference. Right. Well, the thing with the 500 that I noticed right away, it's the instant response, mm -hmm. the trigger response. All the steels to me have a lot of that low end torque, which is That's awesome. what you always said, is that they, they have that just, it just, just keeps going. Whereas the Husvarnas wind up really fast, but don't have as much torque, I don't think. That's just my feel. It's almost like you. Yeah, <laughs> it's my feel anyway. You wind up all the time. <laughs> That's right. But then that 500, and that thing's just right now, yeah. wide open. It's well, a crotch rocket. When you used my 500 and I used your 572, mm -hmm. it's, Pretty close to responsiveness. Yes, responsiveness, not as the right, same, right. but it is. It, it's that real quick response. Yeah, the, the Husqvarna's in general, I think, wind up they hit up top RPMs faster. Mm -hmm. That's. I could be wrong. It just feels that way to me. Yeah. And the 500 is a lot more like that. Mm -hmm. And then when I went to my 592, which is a 92 cc, it was like a whole nother like, hang on, That's hang it. on. It was. I got scared again. <laughs> I was like, wow. My only issue with the 592 is the weight and the noise. Yeah, yeah. Those it's are heavy. the two things. It's, it's heavy, heavy and it's, it's, but it goes through wood like a, like a beast. Yeah, it does. So we talked a little bit about the size of the saws, the cc's and the bar length, the weight of the saw, and you kind of want to match that up. And again, going to a pro shop is the They way will let you know what the minimum and the maximum is, right. which is nice. Right, and you want to be in the range for that particular saw. Just because you could put a 36 inch bar on a 50 cc saw doesn't mean you should. True. <laughs> so um, it it might might work, but you got more more chain to drive, more teeth, and it's going to be not as safe because it's going to be bigger and longer for you to handle for a smaller beginning beginning saw, especially average size saw bar to me is about a 20 incher. That that'll work. 18, almost 20 inch. Right. 18 or 20. Now, inch. if you notice, when you go into a shop and nobody knows what they're doing, the first thing you go is bigger is better, and especially with guys. <laughs> Let me have the biggest one that you that goes on there. No, no, you don't. Exactly. No, and you can put different size bars on saws. They are exchangeable. I mean, like on a lot of saws, you can go all the way from probably a, a 18 or even a 16 inch all the way up to probably like a what, a 32, 36, whatever. There's a wide range in there, but the sweet spot is gonna be 18 to 24, right in there, for most people. Well, you take a 70 cc saw and you put a 20 inch bar on it or an 18 inch bar. Screamer. Man, that thing's going through the wood fast. Yeah, it's a screamer. It's, it's unbelievable. Yep. Is, it, is it the right one? It depends. all depends. Yeah. It all depends. If you're limbing, no, probably not. And if and if you're doing limbing where you think you're going to limb trees where you're doing overhead cutting, right away that's stupid. And if you think Wait you're a second, you just <laughs> not supposed to go above your I shoulders. Know. I know. That's Come what on I'm now. Saying. You're not. I said it's stupid okay. to do that. And some guys would think, oh, I'll put a longer bar. I can reach farther. No. <laughs> or be like Chris. Just <laughs> jump on your ladder and go 20 feet in the air. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's ways to do it right. But oh. yeah, you want, 
you want to you want to have the right tool for the job. Correct. And, and then you want to get a pole saw. If you're going to be cutting stuff up high, you want to get a pole saw or you know whatever it is mm -hmm. that you have. You've got an Echo that works really good. My, mm -hmm. my son has got a Honda one that's really nice. I mean, there's all kinds of versions of stuff. Getting the right tool for the job is the right thing. Yep. So if you're cutting firewood, seeing as that's what this is mainly about, to me, if you're cutting it for your own personal use, a 50cc saw. Let's start with the 50cc and work our way up. Well, why don't we talk about small saws for limbing? Let's okay. grab a saw and we'll talk about that. So, well, let's move how about this. a limbing saw like right here? Yeah, let's move this. Let's set this over here, and we'll set our now. So, oh, that there you go. I switched, I saw a arborist that was working, I, I, I was working with him when he dropped the tree down and I grabbed my 20 inch bar thinking I'm cool dude, I'm gonna show him. And he whipped this little saw mm -hmm. and he started, grab the thing, cut it, throw it out, throw it. I watched him, my, my mouth dropped. I said, unbelievable how nice that is. Yeah. And it's just, it's very specific. It's a limbing saw, or it's a tree that they use up in the tree right. for for cutting. You know, arborist. So this this is something that would be great for a homeowner if you were doing limbing and stuff like that. But for cutting, no, no. Cutting yeah, firewood? Let's back up. Probably not for a homeowner. Firstly, Probably, they yeah. tell you is yeah. you're not supposed to operate these with one, one hand. hand right? Yeah, even though which it's... everyone does. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> but a top handle is for me. It's very well balanced. <laughs> it's very quick, but. I could see where there's a lot of accidents mm -hmm. that could happen if you are if you don't have a tool. Right. Well, the thing a lot of people don't realize, if you're a beginner, this brake right here is activated by this hand. Correct. As the saw kicks back, this goes forward and it locks your bar, it. Your bar as you get a kickback. And all the instructions tell you not to use this one-handed. Yeah. Yeah. So, but for a homeowner, I would definitely, if they want one saw, definitely this not, not this. Right. And as this you is a progress, specialty saw. it is a specialty saw. Right. And progression to the next level, meaning, you know, once you're dropping a lot of trees or doing a lot of limbing, yeah, but everyone's going to say, I only need one, one saw to do both. This, right, and this and you can, the one there's that. absolutely, but limbing. Now let's grab your husky, the small one that you okay. had. Okay, so for those of you, I know you're going to laugh about the car. We're board. not, yeah, <laughs> we're not saying all husky saws leak. That's all, steel well, that no, does that. No, but, all, I mean, no. all saws leak eventually. Uh, but this, really? They, they Can eventually. you say that again? All saws will leak eventually. Okay, great. Well, I've got a so couple. So it's not all the steels. No, but I have a couple saws that are huskies that don't leak, but I have a lot of them that do too. They eventually, the oil will start to leak. You get it. It happens. So this is not my saw. Well, it's mine, but it's not mine. This is a friend of mine's, and he just gave it to me because he couldn't get it to run, and he wanted it sharpened, I got put a new plug in it, cleaned out the air filter, and I got it to run. So he says, just keep it there. He says, when I need it, is I'll just come get it, or you just bring it, because we go to his cabin and cut wood. And this is his saw. So this is basically, uh, he had this for oh, about 20 years now, I bet. It's a 55 Husqvarna, so it's a 50cc saw. And I bought the 455, which is very similar in size to this. A weenie saw, as my brother kind of would say. But for a homeowner, this is like the perfect size saw, I think. I think. Well, it's good for limbing. It's good for cutting a tree because you yeah. can go this up. Is this an 18 inch or a 20? Uh, no, it's 18, I think. Okay, 18. Yeah. So roughly a 36, 35 inches yeah. in diameter you can cut. Right. And if you're going to be and cutting, it's light. Right. And you're going to be cutting stuff that big and you're a beginner, you probably shouldn't even be doing it. Right. You should get help. <laughs> We always try to achieve more than we really should. Yeah, and that's how guys get hurt. Yeah. Because this is a dangerous thing. I know of several people that have been hurt from chainsaws, and it was because they were doing stupid stuff, and they were, they were amateurs, literally, trying to do stuff that they shouldn't have been doing. That's how they get hurt. Well, though we're going to discuss this on a different right. video, right. Uh, a doctor friend of mine in northern Wisconsin told me the two reasons that a person goes to the ER up there in northern Wisconsin, mm -hmm. the first one, fishing. Hooks embedded oh, sure. in their body. That's sure. the first. The second, chainsaws. chainsaws. Right. I believe it. So when you go to this pro shop and you go to buy your saw, you're not going to buy just the saw. What goes along with that? Helmets with a face guard, gloves, chaps, you steel won't toe get boots. That, but you won't get that at, at a, a big box, box store. store. But, but you you're should, pro. You should buy the whole thing because, as my friend Adam would say, safety 
there is no there's no fee that's too much because if you cut your leg if you get something in your eye if you cut your hand it's going to cost you thousands okay. versus spending a couple hundred dollars on safety equipment here's a stat a chainsaw accident the average chainsaw accident 110 stitches Two. 110. That's average. That's average. Yeah. 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 So get the safety gear, wear it. That's all we need to say about that because that's a whole nother that segment. Safety <laughs> is a choice. It's a personal choice. Yeah. Yeah. So I get it. Not everyone likes it. Uh, people have never worn chaps in their life and never been cut. God bless them. I've hit my leg twice. So have I. With chaps. Yep. And I know on one of them in particular, it would have been bad. It was like getting punched really hard. It was. It was. It would have. It would have cut me. And it, the and the chaps work. They stop the saw instantly. So when you're buying your consumer saw, get the chaps. They're not that expensive. Get the helmet. Wear your earmuffs. Wear the shield. Wear gloves. Steel toed boots. Um, if you want to do something interesting, go and look and find out. There's this place you can go and you can look at chainsaw accidents online. Oh, that's and it, it, well, not look at the videos of it. You can if you want. But there's diagrams there, and it'll show the outline of a you know an, an adult person, and it shows where all the accidents have happened. Like the last 10 years, they took like a thousand accidents, and they showed where they all happened on the body, and most of them were. Well, well, that, that was another and step that and I was going to get. <laughs> of the 30,000 accidents that happen every single year, 40% of the accidents are from the waist down, down right. in your um, thigh and your uh, lower part of the body. Mm -hmm. 30 to 35% are from the neck to the waist, usually hand, wrist, or hand, wrist, and um, uh, just upper body type right. stuff. I gotta believe a lot of that's because people are rich, reaching over or someone's helping them possibly. Um, not only that, walking with the saw and not putting the brake on. Yeah, yeah. The, a lot of people. That's a safety item too, yep. Mm -hmm. Now, another thing that a lot of people don't think of like, oh, you know, my dad or my buddy's got a saw I can use and it's a piece of old crap. I'm not saying anything against old saws because there's guys that love their old saws, but most of the old saws don't have a brake. Correct. And I will not run a saw without a break. And uh, there's as, no reason to, none. As you know, as this gets dull, you push harder, yeah, and you're that's when, into it. and yeah. that's when accidents start happening. Yeah. Yeah, the most dangerous knife is a dull one. Yeah, <laughs> for that's sure. Basically, what this is, this is a knife. It's a knife for cutting trees. So yeah, I, I, safety is really important. So that's one thing you won't get at a, a box store. So, but this is a good size saw. It's a good beginner saw, a good intermediate saw. For a guy that's going to heat his house, this is about all you need. If you're only cutting wood for yourself, this is about all you would need. But if you're going to start selling wood and you're going to want to start supplying wood to other people, say you're cutting for your brother or your neighbor or whatever, maybe then it's time to get a bigger saw. And then one thing there. that Andrew from Easton made, made a comment which always has stuck to me is you can't get time back. And that's the one thing you're buying is time. When you buy a saw like this or a commercial log splitter, you're getting that time back. Yep. And I agree with him 100%. Speed is everything if you can control it. That's it. That's just it. You gotta be able to control it because time can go the other direction. You can have something that's super fast and blazing scary speed, but if you get hurt by it, yeah. you're gonna lose all the production time or you're gonna lose time being able to do the things you really like to do. Yep. For us, it just happens to be wood. <laughs> So let's talk about the next level of saws then. Okay. Let's get a couple out. Alrighty. Okay, so the next level saws are basically the saws that are probably the, the one. 10 cc's I, higher, right, roughly. 60 to 70 cc saw, and that's, Correct. this is the saws that I we run the most. Mm -hmm. um, this is a 572. And this is a 362. I, the progression in steel is 261, 360, or 362, mm -hmm. and that's what this is. So what cc is this? Uh, this one is the 60, 60 cc, I 60, believe. Okay, so this is, so there is a Husqvarna that is a 60 cc. My brother uh, Ken has one. It's a 562. Mm -hmm. I don't have one. He has one. It's a nice saw, but I can tell from experience when you're using it, it's great for limbing, but as soon as you start in on that trunk, you wish you had a 70 cc saw. Yep. It's just not quite as fast. Mm -hmm. um, there's a notice, every 10 cc, there's a noticeable difference. There really is. Well, in, in 
if we were looking at this, the 462 then would be right in this area because it's 72 cc saw. Right, right. Do you have so, one? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's figure out that. Isn't it right? Is it this one here? It is. We're not going to bring it because we're not going to move that big one. Oh, yeah. It's right here. Yeah. Yeah. So that's your 462. That that's the 462. That you're going to leave here for yep. me because that's my favorite one. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> So yeah, the, this size saw is, uh, to me, it's it's the go-to for 90% of the work I do. I can cut with it all day long. Now, is this the one with the heated handles? Yes, it is. It's okay. The G. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it is. It's That's the, the one that, I wish steel, steel does make a heated handle saw. Unfortunately, it's only available in Canada. Yeah. I mean, crazy. Yeah, there's a little switch here you turn on and it heats up and it heats up fast. Now, the 5 Series get way hotter than the 3 Series. So my brother Ken has 372s and they get warm and they're nice. This one gets so hot you can hardly hang on to it. Hmm. So when you got gloves on, it's like, wow, is that nice. And with Kenny's, he has to wear thin gloves to feel the heat. Whereas mine, you wear the thin gloves and your hands get, it's like you almost want to put heavier gloves on because they get, and you, but you can turn it on and off and it heats up real fast and it cools down and then you can turn it, you can turn well, it on and off. For the average person, really, no. you don't need it. No. But for production purposes, it's very nice because the tips right. of your finger starts going numb yeah. from the vibration and the cold weather. It can, they can, yeah. The cold weather is what gets you the most. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, this is just a nice sound. Now, this is a 24-inch bar that's on here. It's a light bar. It's a Husqvarna, but it's actually made by, is it Sugihara? Sugihara. Did I say, yeah. Nice, I like them. You just, that little bit extra weight off of it is really good. So this, to me, is the, this is the best all-around saw size that you can get. But let's also go, and you mentioned, in the bar, the light bar. Yeah. Love the light bar. Mm -hmm. But the price is so ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, we switch to Oregon bars because A, we can buy them cheap. Yeah. They last a long time. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, they might weigh a pound, pound and a quarter more. Right. But uh, yeah, I love these. Uh, steel has the same thing. And yeah, steels are very nice. Yeah. They're, they're light bars. Everybody says great things about them. Mm -hmm. so, so there's that. But yeah, it, it's just whatever you are going to be using it for and uh, get the one that is going to work best for your situation and then I would say that once you go from a smaller saw to a little bit bigger saw like you said your eyes are just wide open it's like wow there's a big difference yeah and you don't realize it and like I always say it's like going like going from a, a small motorcycle to a crotch rocket there's a big difference there's mm -hmm. a big difference well as you know we're going to be at the uh, Hoosier hysteria here in May right. Right. and like Mike was telling people, stop on by. We're going to have these saws there. If you want to try them out, feel free. We'll have them there. Um, that's the nice thing is if you could find somebody that has the saw that you want to try it out, because some of the dealers will take you out back and let you cut, but not many of them. Right. So it's always nice if you know somebody and, right. and have uh, try it before you buy it. Right, right. And, and the way to do it, in my opinion, is to offer to, <laughs> to help your buddy go cut wood. Right, right. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Like when guys come to my wood yard, it's like, yeah, come and work. You can use any of my equipment you want at any time. Well, I appreciate the help. Remember what I told you with the pole saw? Let somebody else do it. You buy the pole saw and let somebody else cut. Right. That thing wears you out. Yeah, they do. Yeah, the little bit I've used for my son. Especially yours, when you extend it yeah, all the way. You're, yeah, it's your. It's it's all upper body. And the same thing with these. You know, that's how come, like you said, you know, raising. No, you definitely don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's hard working over your head, and you're not supposed to do it anyway. So, yeah, they're they're great saws. Now, up from this, the next saw that would be in line for Husqvarna is the 592. Uh, they also have a 585. And then for steel, the it's next the 500 is the 500. 70, yeah, 79.2. Then, then up from the 500 is the 661, right? Yeah, and, and the up, 90 series. And up from that is the 881, right. which is the size of that 3120 right. that's up there. So yeah, those are just ridiculous saws. Which there's, there's but there's purpose for them. If you happen to have an Alaskan sawmill, you really need that speed 
or the power, power right. to move that because you're using a ripping chain and you got to remove that. So the better the like the 661 or the 592 probably is one of the better ones to use. Right, right. The, the, those really big saws uh, are, are like you say Alaskan mills and the other people that use them quite a bit are tree service people right. where they, they literally will have a huge tree they have to cut down. Mm -hmm. um, but it's pretty rare that they need them. It, it's, it's more of a toy. It, it is. really is. And the reason I got it is just for fun. It's like a muscle car. You know? <laughs> just for fun. I was, you know, it's the biggest one they make, so I bought it. Um, but yeah, they're, they're definitely fun to run. Definitely a challenge. And that bar that we put on there is ridiculous. It's, uh, it's not really necessary. <laughs> it's just for show. Because <laughs> you can really, like, like my brother Ken says, if you've got a 24-inch bar, you can cut a 48-inch tree. Right. And, and where you, are you going to find a 48-inch tree? There's not too many. Very I've, few. I've only ever cut a few. Um, most of the trees especially the hardwoods in the Midwest here or even going to the, the eastern part of the United States and in the south, most of the trees are going to be 36 inches and under, mm -hmm. most of them. So right there, you know, a 20-inch a 20, a 20 bar is going to cut everything. But again, if you go to the west coast, you're cutting old growth forest, that's where they need, the, you know, the 36 or the 40-inch, 42-inch bars because they are cutting really big trees. And that's it's a totally different type of beast. It's totally well, different. While we're there, we can talk about two. One other thing, that is the dogs. What uh, yeah. is on that side? You want to flip that around? No. Yeah. But dogs. anyways, you were saying that that's one thing you did not like about the huskies is that they really don't have. They're a, okay. Yeah. But the still dogs, which are the teeth that you grab into your bark with, they're not as aggressive as the the steel ones. Although the new 592 that I have, right? You is, have that is, is a nice and one, and it has double dogs, yep. and they're better. I just like them better. But there's aftermarket ones. We had mentioned and aftermarkets. They're there are, and there are so many, and a lot of guys feel here in the Midwest that they have to have these huge dogs on there. Is it just for show? I don't know. I don't see, uh, yeah, I fulcrum it on the tree, but I don't use them that much. And actually, they take away from your performance because they limit you by about an inch and a half or two inches. So you're, And you need all the inches you can get. Oh, thank so, you. Thank so, you. So the, that was, that was, <laughs> was right there. I know. It, it was a it was it was a slow a slam dunk. It was a slow ball. I had uh, to hit it. So the dogs on here, the reason I wish these were more aggressive, I cut a lot of dead standing oak mm -hmm. and the bark's coming off. Yeah. And so when you go to dig your dogs in to do your, your, your fulcrum cut, it, they they the, they don't go through the bark and dig in. Whereas if you get a big spiky one, you can jam it in and they bite better. And the bark, even if the bark starts coming off, the bigger dogs will dig in a little better. And that's just my situation. For most people, this is all you're ever going to need. And on the West Coast guys, the reason they have their big, huge teeth. Oh yeah, they need they're, them. They're cutting trees right. that have bark that's six, seven, eight inches. Totally makes totally, totally makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Totally makes sense yes. on the West Coast. Yeah, totally totally different kind of cutting. And those are the pros. Mm -hmm. Those are not your homeowner type guys that are cutting either. Those are guys that are logging. But also remember one thing. Those things are as dangerous <laughs> as your chainsaw. Because <laughs> yeah. they could not only impale you, but they can cut you real badly too if you're not watching. Yep, yep. But like I said before, my advice is if you're looking at getting a saw, uh, I would get a new one. I wouldn't buy a, a used one. I just wouldn't. Used as in old. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's got the brake. That's huge. The other thing about buying a new saw, you're going to get a little bit of a warranty for however long it is. You're going to get advice. You're basically buying some advice from the people by buying a new one. And they're going to be able to give you the information you need in order to make good decisions. And they can point you in the right direction for class classes if you want to take a class to learn how to cut safely. Um, that's one of the things I've talked about for a long time is that I know there's classes you can go to mm -hmm. and it would be you know something that everybody could do. I should go to a class because there's things I don't know. I'd, it's the other thing, it's just because I have a YouTube channel, everybody thinks I know everything. There's a lot of stuff I don't know and it gets pointed out to me every day. Like, didn't you know that? Like, no, I didn't mm -hmm. know. All of us are smarter than any one of us. So there's always information you can get from other people. And uh, by going to a pro shop, they're going 
going to give you advice. You can talk to your buddies and get advice. And it's not something you're going to learn overnight. People ask me all the time, like, you know, how do you know so many different species of wood? Like, I don't feel like I know that many. And My brother Kenny was been twice out as many. There, yeah. I, it's an everyday thing. You got to constantly be looking. What kind of tree is that? Just by looking at the shape or the bark, or yeah, if you get the leaves, it's easy. Or if you find a piece of wood that's been cut and split and stacked and has turned gray, can you still figure out what it is? I, for the most part, can, but you got to look at it. It doesn't just happen. Well, you, you were talking about the classes mm -hmm. they have here in the Midwest. We have a certification on there, and there's basically four different levels of certification. The, and it's great. Most of the municipalities are mandated for all their employees mm -hmm. that deal with any kind of chainsaw to go for the basics. And it's really good, good quality information, uh, sharpening, taking the, the cover off and everything. Mm -hmm. Most homeowners have no idea. No. Um, we have a friend of ours <laughs> who, who, when we asked him about getting his chain sharpened, what was his comment? I don't get my chain sharpened. I just, I just buy a new chain. Just buy a new chain. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I was I was cutting on a property for a, a relative, and I got my file out, and I was sharing. He says, what are you doing? I said, I'm sharpening the chain. I didn't know you could do that. He yeah. Says, he says, I just go till it starts smoking, and I put a new <laughs> chain on. Bingo, that's it. <laughs> he had no clue. I said, well, yeah, yeah, you can sharpen them. He says, well, can't you pay someone? Well, yeah, you can pay them, but they're not here right now, and I need a sharp chain. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of people don't realize you t can take the whole saw, and they can sharpen it. If you leave it on, they'll sharpen it right on the saw. And you're going to pay anywhere from, on the very low end, 4 to $6 right. to 8 to $10, maybe even $12 to have it sharpened. So it's like almost depending one fifth of the cost of the chain right. depending on how many right or or half the cost of the chain you know because i get my mm -hmm. chains generally a lot of the chains i buy i'm getting them for oh less, yeah less than twenty dollars that's paying it. 17 18 dollars for the most part because we buy in bulk and buy at the shows so mm -hmm. there's that so one of the things i wanted to bring up about the classes um there's one other thing that doesn't relate to this but it does to, to me in, in a way another thing that i think there should be classes for is trailering Oh, absolutely. <laughs> because when you first get your first trailer, do you know how to back it up? No. Heck no. Same thing. <laughs> Go to the boat landing on opening day of, of fishing here in Wisconsin Watch, guys. <laughs> and just anyway. have your camera there. More divorces have come from that. Yeah. Well, and, and the accidents. You know, yeah. Not having your safety chains, not having your lights working, not having brakes, not having, having it overloaded, having your load not secured properly, how to handle it if something happens, having too much back weight instead of tongue weight. There's so much to learn and trailering yep. that the average person doesn't know. I never knew until I started hauling wood because I had pulled a few trailers and figured out how to back up. But to really, truly know it, it takes a lot of practice. And there should be a class on it. No doubt. Just no like doubt. Chainsaws. But, and, I'm, and I'm not trying to promote more control of what you do in your life. I like freedom. <laughs> but when it comes to safety, you, it's hard to put a price on it. It really is because it's one of those things. You're either going to pay me now or pay me later. Well, it's no different than here in Wisconsin. If you want to go hunting or you want to purchase a gun or not necessarily purchase, you need to take a class. Uh, right. um, well, there's basic, classes on boating now. There's right. classes on snowmobiling, snowmobiling ATV right. and everything. Right. All of them, you can get certified in it. Just makes you a better person. But one actually. of the most dangerous things there is. Right here. You don't need a class. Go cut. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Give me some money. Here you go. Go hurt yourself. That's exactly it. That's where I think pro shops should have classes occasionally to the public. Have them offered and, and teach people. And Well, to give you an example, the class that they have $110 per each level. Oh, okay. So that's what it is. It's a little pricey if you think about it. $100, that's almost the ha a third of a cost of a chainsaw. A beginner saw, right. Yeah, yeah. beginner right. saw. But to me, it's invaluable. So is there anything else we need to talk about about chainsaws other than they're well, fun? And uh, loud. We think they're fun. Yeah, they are. Other people think they're stinky and they make noise. <laughs> they well, do. wait a second. You do. They do. Well, so th the next thing we probably could... <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> the next thing we could talk about is where it's going. 
everybody's pushing for electric. Everybody's push, pushing for batteries. And, and it's a huge heated debate. I'm right in the middle of it. I can see the benefit of it, especially the guys that I have talked to, their arborists, to be able to slap a battery on and be able to do their cutting. And they have it, a lineup of all their saws that they can take the batteries and they can, they can have it where their trimmers run the same battery, their saws can run the same battery, their different tools they have can run on the same battery. It is nice. However, the problem is, well, there's a lot of problems. Number one is everybody's fighting for the same resources right now. Right. They can't, the battery. Get, they can't get it fast enough made because you're competing with everything from cars down to homeowner appliances that are battery operated. And it's all the same same. Uh, There's only, if I believe, using. in where I used to work at Bosch, there were only, and we were just getting into battery power, there was only two companies or three companies that made batteries. Right. You There's had more to, now. And who, there are now, yeah. But there's only so much of these chemicals that they put in, and right. they're making the batteries better and better. But California is the perfect example, the poster child of batteries. Uh, anything that's, uh, I forget what the CC is. I think it's like 30-something. And that's what I got. Yeah, 30, 35. Something something like that. It has to be battery operated. And they're mandating it now. And I don't know. There's going to be a lot of people just buying stuff out of state and bringing it in, is what they're going to do. They think they can mandate safety all the time. And there's only so far you can go. And so on the battery thing, they're great. Yeah, it's going to happen eventually. But if you're a logger, are you going to carry a backpack of batteries with you when you go into the woods or just a gas can? That's a tough one. There's that. And. I know the battery ones. I've operated a few battery things. They're pretty darn good. Yeah, they're, they're powerful. Bad. Yeah, and they are quieter. It's. I can see where there's a, there's a use for them. I am not. I, I am not a, I'm not a 100% gas guy. I'm not a 100% battery guy. I'm for the best tool for the job. And the best tool for the job when you're cutting a lot is gas, <laughs> gasoline. Agreed. So there's that. So what we want to do different with this versus a live stream is kind of have a topic in mind that we're going to talk about and you know have kind of an outline and cover the stuff that's important so it's not just going off in all kinds of directions, even though we're going to do a little of that. We want to kind of focus on the topic and then cover it a little bit in depth and, uh, and, and cover the things that are pertaining to that topic. So unlike a live stream, we're going to have everything basically scripted before to know what we're going to be talking about it and keep on task so that we know we cover as much as we can in a short period of time. Right. And we'll probably do anywhere from a half hour to an hour, I think, mm-hmm. and keep it more informative. And um, it'll be it'll be stuff that you guys want to hear. So if you guys have well, ideas... actually, yeah, it's the stuff that we get comments on right. that we're going to try Try to address and answer. Right, and and Tony's channel is Tony's Cool Cool Tools, and uh, he has a video every week, every Sunday. Yep, and I try to do a video every day, which is probably not going to last oh, forever. Oh come on! <laughs> um, uh, I've already done over a thousand days in a row, of two and a half years, and it's so why change? Uh, because I have no life. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> and the thing is, is what's happening is I'm doing, I'm trying to do better videos. The more, the so you're saying you do bad videos? Well, yeah, I have done a lot of bad oh. ones. Um, but I'm trying to do better jobs, a better job on each video. And as I do that, I'm using more and more time, shooting more and more footage, editing, getting more and more. I have more and more comments. It's just getting too much to handle. So I would love to do a podcast every week. That's my goal, is to do a podcast every week. And then probably do a video every other day, something like that in the near future, and try to do better videos. So you're so, letting them down slowly. Well, and it's not going to happen right away it's going to be gradual i think so it's the first time you're hearing it is here i'm eventually going to go to every other day so, so under unlike the coke dealer that you used <laughs> to, your model from you get us hooked and now you're going to wean us well yeah but it's not i'm just going to go to a more potent version so you're impotent now <laughs> <laughs> oh, there I'm he sorry. is again. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to try to do a better better job on the videos. They might may be a little longer, but just do a better job on them and have uh, every other day thing and then a weekly podcast. So my plan for the future is three videos a week and a podcast. 
That's pretty cool. Which is it's quite a bit. Heck of a lot more than most of us. The other reason why I want to do that is I'd like to put more time into my other channel. Out of the Woodyard. Ah. Because I haven't done much with it because I have not had time. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but it's getting harder. It's hard. It's hard, yeah. People yep. have no idea. I spend, on average, six hours a day on YouTube. Once again, not many people know what it takes for the behind the scenes. No. It's, it's tough. In the beginning, it was easy because I would shoot a video, I would download it, I would take a little few things out, it was done. I could literally spend an hour or so to shoot a video, edit it quick, download it. But now that I'm shooting three or four cameras sometimes, oh. I'm editing different sounds in, taking, doing music, doing all the stuff I do and trying to do a better job on the videos, there are times I'll have eight hours of footage. Oh, for a video that is going to be 30 minutes long. Definitely. Yep. And that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you got to go through it all, pick out all the good stuff and put it where it needs to be. It's just the editing is huge. It's huge. That's what's just and you know, once again you told me <laughs> if you want to kiss your life goodbye, <laughs> start a channel. <laughs> I only do one video a week and it's just unreal. Yeah, you'll get better. You get better equipment. You'll so be you're better. saying I'm bad? No, no. Oh, no, okay. You're just, I, you're, everybody is at a different point in their experience in education, no matter Definitely. what it is they're doing. Chainsaws is a good example. Driving. There's really good drivers. There's really bad drivers. There's people that never learn how to drive. There's people that are experts that make their living driving. You're going to get all kinds. And hopefully we just can become a conduit to explain advanced stuff to people that are starting or new things to people that have been around a long time that aren't aware of some of the changes. So, For me, my goal in the channel was educating people or just letting people know what's out there because a lot of people don't know what's good or bad. Right, and you have the experience to do it because yeah. being in the industry you were in and my whole thing was is I saw channels that were doing stuff that they were hobbyists, mm -hmm. I should say, or just playing with equipment, and I wanted to actually show actual business grow as I was doing what I was doing. And, Which you uh, did. And teach other people how to do it. So it's an, that's another thing I'm working on. I'm working on a, a course, so that's huge. So that's that's taking a lot of time. So, And I got I got some products I'm working on, real products. Not Is it from the S&M industry? Or? <laughs> Oh, he's got oh, well, that's no. what you were talking about. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Pro products that you can use in uh, firewood. Oh, tools. Got it. Not toys. Tools. Um, and there, a lot of things that I'm working on are things that are either great improvements on existing tools or tools that don't exist at all. And I've got some pretty cool things that we're working on right now. So that's the other reason why I'm, Sweet. I'm starting to work on that. So that's it for today, folks. Hit the buttons. We'll be back. I'll be back tomorrow. I don't know when you're going to be back. Yeah, we're going who to do, knows? We're going to we'll do another one of these, hopefully one a week. And uh, if you want to give us some comments, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, I have other videos on the channel. There's over a 1,000 for you to watch. Just go there and check them all out. They're all good. If and watch, stop by Tony's Cool Tools. Tony's Cool Tools. He's got great videos. If you want to learn about stuff, tractors, chainsaws, UTVs, wood boilers, he goes real in-depth on his videos covering things, and he's doing a great job of it, and you should check it out. So. Um, that's it for today, folks. Hey, good night, Irene. Good night, Irene. Mm -hmm.